YouTube, what is up guys, James, MTG Biggie, and as promised, I am back with another standard deck tech for Rivals of Ixalan standard. We did Merfolk, and I do want to make some updates to Merfolk. I did Merfolk before the complete spoiler was out, and the deck list that is on there, um, on that video, is not exactly where I want to be. Um, some updates to it will be coming, I might make a whole other video or I might just make a brief update video to that deck list or just release that deck list in the comments down below that video. I haven't quite decided yet. I'm still working on some final tweaks for the deck and seeing where it goes from there. But look for that soon. Um, as of right now, we're not talking about Merfolk. We're talking about a different tribe that is on Ixalan that is... Already seeing some standard player or was last standard format and I think got a lot of help this standard format and that is standard vampires um, I know the mono white aggro deck was very vampire based but not a hundred percent of vampire deck and there are some tokens builds in Abzan and in black and white um, and in Esper even however I think Vampires, as a pure, synergistic, tribal deck, can be very good in Standard. So we'll get through the boring part, which is the lands. And I will preface this before. It's $106 and 37 tickets on Moto. So it's a pretty affordable deck. So this is technically a budget deck tech as well. Um, and the deck itself is almost mono-white. Except for a couple Black Splashes main deck and then some Black Sideboard cards. So the basic lands are as follows. We're on six planes, three swamps, so nine basics. And then four Concealed Courtyard, which is the best black-white dual land we have access to right now. And then four Unclaimed Territory and a couple Shafet Dunes and Ifnir Dreadlands, or Deadlands rather. Um, this just allows us to go wide and pump our team and have one big alpha strike or even two in a row if we need it. Um, the Deadlands is just a nice sort of utility land. It could get a creature out of the way um, for one of our guys to get through or just shrink down their biggest threat so we can actually compete with it because we are playing a lot of dudes and a lot of small dudes. Which shouldn't be a big problem. Big creatures, um, like big haymakers, shouldn't be a massive problem because we should be just overwhelming the ground with our um, our vampire troops. So, some returning... Oh, and sorry, the, uh, the organization here is a little awkward, but two Forsaken Sanctuary, so 22 lands total. Um, enters the battlefield, tap lands are not great, but there's no other pure black-white dual lands. So, we have to go with a couple of them to fix our mana. Because of the spells we're playing in the sideboard especially, we need black mana fairly early in the game. So, that's where we're at. But returning to the Vampire's deck, we're on four Bishop Soldiers. Just a 2-2 Bear with Lifelink. That's a Vampire. Um, three of Maverin Fane, Dusk Apostle. Which makes us tokens whenever we connect or attack with one of our non-token guys um, the legion conquistador which was in the deck previously allows us to go fetch more of himself um, duskborn sky marcher the pumping a vampire plus one plus one till the end of the turn one drop for a one one not incredible but not bad for what we're doing and the adanto vanguard so i didn't play much of the uh actually any of the previous vampires deck I just knew this was sort of the shell, and these were the creatures that were in it. So we're continuing with that. In addition, we're on three Legion's Landing as another one drop. And then we get some new cards. Um, first of which is Sky Marcher Aspirant. It's a one mana, two one. So we have Savannah Lions. Uh, two powered one drops are pretty powerful for what we're doing. I think this is the better of our group of one drops and if we have the city's blessing it gets flying as well 
which we will be able to have this lady's blessing a lot of the time because we are a go wide strategy there's a lot of tokens a lot of one and two drops so that's not unrealistic but mainly we're here for the statistics the two one for one mana we're trying to be aggressive and trying to get to the board quickly um additionally we have the new lord legion lieutenant which is the reason to put black in your vampires deck because now we have a two mana black and white two two where other vampires get plus one plus one which is great value in this sort of deck where our creatures are not the most powerful on their own coming together and having a synergy to help them out and get a little bit bigger with a lord is very good as anybody who's played merfolk in any format knows um, the two mana lords are very powerful and very good if you're playing a tribal deck. It's good to have one. So we're on four of those. And then we have another two drop, which is Famished Paladin, which this guy I'm not entirely sold on. Um, he's a two mana three three, which is really good stats, but he doesn't untap during your untap step unless you gain life. So... It's going to take some synergy with our lifelink tokens. And we have a lot of ways to gain life just through combat. So this guy is going to play out quite a bit like Glorybound Initiate. Where we're going to be able to play him turn 2, attack on turn 3. And um, if we have the turn 1 lifelink dude from like Allegiance Landing or something. And it's attacking next to him, he'll untap right there at the end of combat. Which is actually really good. We can use him, hold him back as a blocker at that point as well. Um, otherwise, he's going to need some help to untap. But I still think a 2-mana 3-3 three, three is pretty good. And even getting bigger with a lord. If we have a lord or two in play, a 2-mana 4-4, 2-mana 5-5. It starts to become like our little cheap Termagoyf. Um, beyond that... We have two of Forerunner of the Legion, which is a three mana 2-2. Two, two. When he enters the battlefield, we get to search our library for a vampire card, reveal it, shuffle our library, then put it on top. And then whenever another uh, vampire enters a battlefield under our control, we get to give another creature plus one, plus one until the end of turn. So this acts as a tutor for any of our vampires, which we actually have a pretty neat combo um, not really a combo, but a neat synergy between a couple creatures that we're not playing four ofs because they're legendary. So this allows us to go tutor up a piece of that. And it also pumps somebody on our team whenever we cast a new dude. So it just falls into the, like, bunch of dudes that are pretty bad on their own but work together for the greater good, as tribal decks tend to do. Um, and then, let me clear these out. We have... A one of Bishop of Binding, which this one I wasn't entirely sure on. I'm testing a one of. I think it's good, but it's really, really underwhelming for four mana with a one one body. If I had a two two or a two three body, it would be much, much better. But I think one of is good enough to have. When it enters the battlefield, we exile a creature and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. So we have a. Um, like a uh, Banisher Priest effect. And then whenever it attacks, target Vampire gets plus X plus X, where X is the power of the exiled card. So in standard, if we exile a Long Tusk Cub with it that had a couple counters put onto it, um, we could swing in if the board is clear and pump another dude and give it plus 4, plus 4, plus 3, plus 3, whatever the case may be. So that's fairly powerful, but mainly... Um, you know, it's a main deck answer to a annoying creature, to a powerful creature. Just as sort of a tempo play takeaway one of your guys give us a guy of our own sort of thing. I don't think it's going to be more than one, maybe two of, including sideboard. But we'll see where it goes from here and how powerful it is in practice. So far, it's actually been decent. I played a couple games where I stole, like, their two-drop. And even though it's a little two-powered guy, it just allowed me to get through with my little annoying vampire-y guys. Um, and then we are on two of the new legendary vampire, um, Elenda, the, Elenda the Dusk Rose. It's a 1-1 one, one for 4. Again, 
pretty bad stats, but it has a lot of abilities and a lot of text. So she has lifelink, and also whenever another creature dies, she gets a plus one, plus one counter. And then when she dies, we create X white vampires that are one, one lifelink tokens, like everything else, um, where X is the power of Alenda. So if we could set it up where we get her into play, and then it makes combat really awkward for our opponents. We could just run tokens into guys and just pump her up to be huge. That's one way to go about it. Um, naturally, on the battlefield, combat will happen. And she'll naturally probably grow a little bit. But the interesting part is we're trying it right now as a one of Gehenny's Undying Partisan. Which is a 2-2 vampire Aetherborn. Um, with haste, and whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. And then we get to sacrifice another creature to make it indestructible. So this is also, like, this is not only a good body, a 2-2 two, two for 3 with haste, which haste is pretty important when we're trying to be aggressive. It allows us to sacrifice things at will. Um, the creatures that we get off of Legion's Landing... Even when it's flipped or whatever, when we make tokens, we could dump them to Yeheni and give it indestructible and attack in. But we have a free open sacrifice outlet for Alenda the Dusk Rose to grow. The reason I'm only playing two and one of is because we have the tutor guy. So we have the forerunner of the Legion where we get tutor up either of these pieces. That's how I'm playing it for now because I want to be low to the ground. I don't want to be stuck on three and four drops in this deck. I want a lot of one and twos, which we do have. So, oh, I'm sorry. This is a two of. <laughs> I feel dumb now. Okay, so we're on two Yeheni, two Alenda, the Dusk Rose. And again, we're not maxing out because they're legendary, and we can go tutor for either piece of that puzzle, of that combo. Um... The Tutor Vampire allows us to trim our numbers and just have some silver bullets. And if we draw either of them naturally on the curve, if we curve like Legion's Landing into Bishop's Soldier, into Yeheni, into Alenda the Dusk Rose, that's going to be a curve that's difficult for people to, to uh, beat. Same as if we go like the Aspirant into the Lord, into... Yeheni into Alenda or any of our number, any combination of our one and two drops into three and four with Alenda and uh, Yeheni or into Forerunner to go fetch the other part of the combo. That's fairly powerful and a fairly good curve. That's why I like this deck. The curve is pretty, uh, pretty well balanced. We have a lot of aggressive draws that we can play out with this deck. And it has a neat little synergy with it that I don't think the other tribal decks get. And the lifelink is not irrelevant at all. It's um, It just helps us play aggressively, but also be able to keep pace with the mono red decks of the format. Ramunop red will still be a thing. It may even get a little better. So I think we have a lot of play against that deck and probably most other decks. Um, and then we're on a one of Radiant Destiny. And this card being an Anthem effect, only if you have Ascend. It's decent, and I think this is the deck for it. If we're going to play this card ever in Standard, it should be in this deck in Vampires. Um, three mana... As it enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type, and then our creatures that are that type get plus one, plus one, as long as we have the city's blessing. That's not incredible. I think a one of is fine. We're testing it out. It could be more, but I doubt it. I think we are going to be able to ascend and get the city's blessing fairly reliably, but I don't want to put a lot of eggs in that basket. Um... If we can get this on board and have a Lord or two in play, though, things can get out of hand pretty quickly. Then over to the sideboard. We're on four duress. Um, the control decks, we're just going to have to be able to hopefully take their sweepers away. This is to 
stop sweepers and removal early. Um, it just is what it is. We're limited on colors, so we want more play against the control decks because I think that might be where we struggle a bit. I played the blue-white cycling deck that plays a lot of sweepers, and I played against the mono-white version of this in previous standard at a PPTQ and crushed it. So I wanted to be prepared for that. Duress is probably the best answer we're going to get with these colors. Then we have three Fatal Push, which we're not triggering Revolt a lot unless we get Yeheni on board. But um, it's still one mana removal. This is coming in against Mono Red, probably against Teamer Energy. Um, just to get rid of a threat that can outclass ours on the curve. Which a lot of them do, so that's that. Kimball, Console of Allocation, is actually a very interesting in include here. And this is also for the Control Mirror, or Control Match, not Mirror. Um, just having giving us a little bit of reach, making their game plan harder, because every time they cast a non-creature, they're going to take two. Which is pretty good. I don't think that we can main deck this, because it doesn't fit in our Vampire Synergy. But I think if we're planning on a grindier game, we could bring in the Duresses, bring in the Kimball, maybe bring in a couple cast outs, which we have two of here, and board out some of our less impactful cards, or our more vulnerable to removal cards, and play a little bit of a grindier game. Additionally, Gideon's Intervention as a two of. This is a concession to Approach of the Second Sun, because we're aggressive, but that deck has a lot of um, ways around what we're doing, a lot of removal, a lot of ways to stall the uh, game out and to try to expand the game into the long run. And we're not beating an approach to Second Sun. So if we can Gideon's Intervention on 4 before they can approach on 7, we're doing pretty well. And then 2 Dusk Till Dawn. Um, this is a very powerful card. I've played it in Modern Death and Taxes. It allows us to basically have kill everything that our opponent's doing um, aggressively or bigger than us and keep our guys behind. None of our deck dies to this card except for the, um, the two mana guy that doesn't untap. So if we're playing against somebody trying dinosaurs out or somebody with merfolk that has a bunch of lords and stuff, we have the luxury of having a sweeper that doesn't kill our board and kills their board, and that's very good. And then we have the one of Ravenous Chupacabra. I am a huge fan of this card. I think it's Bananas. Flame Tongue Cabo is a really good card. And um, I think having it in standard with zero drawback, aside from it not being a vampire in our deck, is really good. Four mana answers whatever you're doing except for maybe a Bristling Hydra. So, I think this is a very good rate. We can knock out a Torrential Gear Hulk, knock out a Scorpion or a Scarab God for the turn. We can take down a bigger Long Tusk Cub. Anything in the format that is relevant that they're doing, even a Merfolk Lord, whatever the case may be, we're going to handle it because we have a Chupacabra. Um, this card's bananas. It's really good. I have another deck tech coming that will have this as one of the main players in the deck. So I look forward to that. But that is it. Standard Vampires. Let me know what you guys think. I think we have a good, aggressive curve of creatures. There's kind of no nonsense in this. It's pretty straightforward. And so far, it's been a lot of fun. Um, if you have any comments or adjustments you would make to the deck or suggestions, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. I always check those out, and I look forward to it. I know there are some in the Merfolk list that I have to reply to because that list is changing. There are issues with it, and we are changing it soon. But um, that's it. Standard Vampires. I look forward to this maybe being a real deck in Standard, and I look forward to the new Standard. Hopefully something can come along and dethrone Energy as the deck to be on. And if Vampires is it, Maybe we have a good start here. Um, so that's all I've got, guys. I'll talk to you again very soon.